Hi, welcome to Zoom Chats 2020, episode three. Today we're visiting with royalty. I'm totally serious. I mean, listen to this. She's a professional vocal teacher and a member of the National Association of Teachers of Singing. She holds a BA in music education as well as an MA in vocal pedagogy. She is the first Sweet Adeline to win three international crowns in 1976, 1988, and in 2001. She is also the Master Director 700 who directed her course to the International Gold Medal, a certified sound judge, and one of only a handful of our members to reach the master faculty level. And she's a President's Lifetime Achievement Award winner. We are so lucky to get to visit with her today. Welcome, Kim Vaughn, to our Zoom room. Oh, thank you so much. I love this idea. Oh, good. <laughs> it's so much fun. It's nice to be able to see you. It is really nice to see you in today's yeah, very strange yeah. world. So Kim, what oh. year did you join Sweet Adelines? I joined three years after the first quartet we're going to use, three, about five years maybe, after the first quartet that we're going to use, okay? And I, uh, uh, so that would be 1974. Okay. And um, it took me until the next regional before I actually heard anyone other than my own little chorus. I did. I heard no okay. barbershop of any kind other than my little 18 voice chorus until I went to the regional contest, which was old region 11. Okay. Uh, before I had split between 11 and 21. So it had all these really major Los Angeles and Southern California choruses in it. And my little chorus came in last. Were you the director? No. Oh, oh no. no. But I was the lead section leader okay. because I could read music. Right. <laughs> Not because I knew anything about singing lead. So I, I was just, I was stunned. I was completely blown away by that first contest oh. and uh, began to, I, I didn't realize that my sound judge future started that day. Okay. I could start, I started to hear it and I thought, oh my gosh this is so cool look what it could be in so those quartets i thought those regional quartets oh my gosh i thought all of them should win i had the same reaction all of them. i did too how did you find sweet allies then my mother my okay. mother i went away from home at 18 and i came back at 21 and my mother had joined sweet adeline she had become a sweet adeline thanks Mom. in every way <laughs> in every way. She was a bass and um, and she said, you'll have to come with me or else. I, I just, there was something about the way it was put together. It took my little old alto heart and said, oh my gosh, I don't have to be the alto in the world, in the room that's going, everybody bigger except you. Right. <laughs> be a lead. Oh my gosh. Which you, oh were, my God. you were meant to be. Yeah. So I know you said that you wanted to talk a little bit about where our sound has progressed from our beginning yeah. early years to the kind of sound we're produ producing now. So walk us through it. Where do you want to start? We're going to talk about the progression of the Sweet Adeline sound and what era are we going to start with? In 1967 was the first time that we had seen a quartet actually do a package three times. Yeah. So they did it. They started out, ex they used the same personality in their six songs all the way through. And it was the whole story of Cinderella. And it was not only visually exciting to watch and everybody's got their mouths hung, you know, going, oh, can you do that? Yeah. Of course they could, but they, so much of their music was done. Um, this song was written for them okay, by Iris, by Jean Cocroft, uh, Iris's husband. And, um, I just, and it features our very own Ruth Ann Parker. Oh, great. And, uh, at singing baritone. So I just thought, let's do this. You mustn't worry, you shouldn't even pout, cause everything will be all right. Cinderella, some lucky fellow will find you and make you his bride tonight. Oh, what a night when it's gloomy, stars are out of sight, and everything is quite in dark. Cinderella, your future is gonna be mighty bright. You gotta be so optimistic. You gotta be happy and gay. When all of the world is a playground, pack up your troubles and play. What a great time you are gonna have. All the 
skies will be bright. Cinderella, some lucky fellow will find you and make you his bride tonight. You how bright and clean that is. Oh, I can't wait to hear what you're going to say. I know. Well, it, it was so exciting. That's the thing about it is that it's just plain exciting. <laughs> it's um, everybody's got the same vocal style. It's all bright. It's all pingy. Yeah, it's all right out in front. Yeah. Every, and they're all doing it exactly together. It is like almost perfectly in sync. Right. Okay? It's like they're breathing each other 100%. It's completely and totally committed to the song and to each other. And that sound is right out here, right, right like in the lesson. front. It's like a lesson in vowel lock. Oh gosh, isn't it though? I yeah. mean, they're right there. This is one of those champions that step that 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 sticks out from everyone else because they were such a strong unit. So while it lacks a lot in resonance, resonance was not something we were talking about. No. Um, and this is the sound. That's the sound that I started with. So when I joined in 1974, that's the sound that we were hearing for the most part. And then, and then we started to hear other sounds. In 1970, it, with the rarities, which we're gonna hear now, that was the Hurricane Honeys, if I didn't say that, this, the, these are the rarities. The rarities had a voice teacher singing tenor. This is Jarmela Spetta singing tenor. And she, you can tell, has an influence on this quartet. So in, in the Hurricane Honeys, everything's unit. Everything is, everybody's doing the same stuff exactly at the same time in the exact same way. Okay. In this quartet, the lead begins to take predominance. Okay? And it's warmer. You can hear the voice teacher in it. Okay, here we go. Oh, my man, I love him so. He'll never know. All my life is just despair. if I say start to open up you can hear it going back and forth it's like there's this little transition thing going on this is what we've been doing yeah. but then when they won they had started doing something else they had started warming it up so the the sound of you could hear some vowels that would go that are really still very much in the hurricane honey sound but then they would open it up to another one you go oh yeah <laughs> yeah okay that's where we're going Okay, you can hear a tiny little bit of um, less unit in this sound, but you get um, the trade off for that is that you're beginning to get lead personality. Yeah. And I think this is the beginning of leads who um, begin to show a little bit of soloistic tendency. You begin to hear just a little bit of soloist to it. I have always believed, now remember this is my opinion, I have always believed that leads kind of come in two different types. We have soloists who become leads and learn to become unit singers. And we have unit singers who learn to become leads. Makes sense. And it's, it's two different approaches to it. Right. Okay, and this is definitely a um, non-unit lead who has learned to become lead. Well, all of a sudden we have these beautiful sauce. Yeah, that's what I've said. It's so beautiful. Uh -huh. Yeah, it really is. And it's there's two sisters in that quartet. That really helps. The baritone and the leader sisters. And um, that always helps. That family blend, you know, always helps. 
Is that fun? Yeah. Who's cool. now? We're going to go to 1973. Now things are beginning to change. Right. This is 1973. This is the Tiffany's. And what I want you to do is listen to the um, barbershopness of it. Here we go. She was mine in May. Is in June. She forgot my soon. And here am I, broken heart. I just love, I just love the way they sing that. That's Dale Syverson, by the way, for those who might not know, singing baritone. That's her first, um, her first gold medal. Okay, it's not as strong technically a unit, but listen to what it does to the sound. Oh my gosh, the vowel sounds start to open up and you get goosebumps. I find myself getting goosebumps going, oh my, for a completely different reason. There's two other really wonderful things happening in here. One of them is really pretty bass. Really pretty bass sound. Okay, lyrical, musical, okay. Beautiful right there. And the lock between the bass and the lead is really good. But oh my gosh, when it locks up, you go, oh, it was just <laughs> breathtaking. It's just breathtaking. I love the balance of it. It is so barbershop balanced all the way through. Yeah. Okay. Even the little moment where you bring the tenor out and all that, it was just, it's like, um, it's like a little master class here on how to sing barbershop. It's great. It, yeah, it matched. It's right. wonderful. So now yeah. we have. <laughs> okay, so this is my first quartet. So the reason I'm using this, you guys, is because I live these changes. Um, and so in high society in 1976, Los Angeles, Southern California was a hotbed for vocal production. And the reason was because our sweet Adeline organization made a very wise decision in those years. And that is they started paying attention to voice teachers. Now, as far as I know, at that point, the only two voice teachers I knew in the organization were Jarmel Espeta and Mary Dick both of whom were queens. Um, and, I, and they had an influence. They started, you started to hear this pretty stuff coming through and, and it's, it had an influence. You could hear it in the sounds okay, of what was going on. Um, you could hear the voices change. So the reason I picked this next one for us is because in the middle of Thank You World with High Society, you actually get to hear each of the voices individually. Okay, and I so you can hear what the lead sounds like and then what the tenor sounds like and then you can get the idea of 
listen to the vocal production that has changed okay. on the individual voices. Okay. I may not ever stand like Stonewall Jackson stood and standing on that stage to me is just as good and I may never be a heavy or great but you've given me the strength the strength to pull my weight you know the part I sing is truly part of me and it does its part like the other parts in king it does its part joined Sweet Adelines as um, thinking that I should be a soloist singer. Um, and I think I came in feeling or being trained that that's what I was supposed to do. Although my whole background had been alto and had been harmony singer. Yeah. So I really worked at becoming um, predominant, not by being louder, but by what I did with my voice. Okay. So. I could hear that happening in this song. I could hear that going, world you've given, oh, or Sandy Shelver's part makes me laugh because the baritone, world you've given me a place that I call by, no, I stepped out of it and I got none of that. Yeah, oh, great. <laughs> you hear that wonderful full beige <laughs> the baritone does. Hey. You know, it opens it up and goes, yeah, I can make this work, watch me. I'll just fix it for you. But for instance, listen to Pat, that rumble, big musical bass part. Okay. It, she's just, uh, she's just perfect. As far as I'm concerned, that's exactly how you should sing bass. But then I'm a little prejudiced. A little bit. A little bit. But oh my gosh, that's wonderful. And then Sandy does her thing. And then I do my trying to be the lead thing, you know, and all that with all the rhythm stuff that I like to do. And then there's Connie who floats on the top of us and says, oh, by the way, it goes like this. <laughs> let me show that, you. Yeah, let me show you all how it's supposed to be. So one of the things I want to say about that is if you come in working on soloist stuff, you need great harmony singers around you. Yeah. Because they hold it together. They make this work. And that's what this did. These are great singers, but we were trained by first Joni Beskos and then Carolyn Butler. Yeah who were the two people on the West Coast who were pushing vocal production. Right. We had a lot of training in how to do that. This didn't come from voice lesson stuff. This came from us. This came from barbershop and learning how to do that. Okay. And that you could hear the individual voices changing. Right. Okay. Then we go to, let me turn this over. Oh yes. Now we go to 1981 and they used this song that no one had ever heard. Okay. No one had heard this done. I believe Sylvia Alsbury um, arranged this specifically for them. Now, all four of these people had sung in other places and had all done bright sound. Oh. All of them. Okay. And now they get into this one and that by 1981 and listen to what we're doing. Okay. There's a rocking chair in the corner. Thank you. 
open? It's like, <laughs> you can hear the tendency when you take bright voices and you put them on bright vowels like E, okay? It's still, it's still there. It's still in that bright place. So that could have been a bit more open and all that. But did you hear the ones they worked on? You'd hear it go, oh, listen to that. Yes. And yeah, they that's also what supposed to do. Breathe sing. So in uh-huh. the 80s, oh, yes, don't the 80s, they? we really started to look at that aspect of keeping the sound going over the need for air, right? Yep. yep. <laughs> and it's and it's beautiful. It is. It's absolutely beautiful. I don't know why nobody sings that song right now. Maybe it got really popular right after they won, and then it kind of went away, but it's a great song. I think it's, the, the melody line is gorgeous. Well, it's kind of rangy, though. Those yes, it is that. So, I mean, it takes... We're going to go on to 1988. This is Savvy, uh, my second quartet. Now, uh, Savvy was the first time that we... This is when we started having queens coming back into contests. Oh. Okay? This is when this all started. We, a whole bunch of it, of former champions were still young. There were a bunch of them. And, uh, you know, the, the thought was, well, do we just put everybody on the sidelines and let them sit there forever? Or do we start going back into contest? And of course we went back into contest. Um, the cool thing about that is that most everybody was afraid we would just walk in and win, which of course nobody did. Everybody went through the chairs just like everybody else. The only difference, I think, is that you do things faster. If you've done it before, you've been through, but the steps are the same. Yeah. You've been through the steps, but the steps don't change. Okay. And this is one of those times when we were really working on resonance. The whole organization was really working on resonance. Holy moly. Yes, everything, lots of holy moly, lots of backspace and all that kind of stuff. And this is, uh, the only quartet uh, that I ever sang in where I actually personally changed my sound on purpose. Okay. I added the balance between focus and resonance. I changed it towards resonance. Okay, let's let's hear. In my sweet little Alice will go. Was, 
to Dory. So was that because of the trend in Sweet Adeline? Yes, or because oh, of catching your face? Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, we were being coached by Bev Sellers, and um, it it was wonderful. I, it was really good coaching, and it was it was so good to learn. But it it always felt like a transition to me. Oh. It always felt like okay, I'm now I'm learning. I'm learning something else. Well, you learned pretty well, Kim. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was lucky. We all um, want to learn like you learn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a hard worker. Yeah. I'm a hard worker. When I work on stuff like that, I'm a hard worker. I put a lot of time and energy into it. This is not one of those things that you just sort of wake up one morning and poof, you have this. No, my favorite you know? thing, so you were talking about queens coming back and wanting to do it again. And so when I first joined, I couldn't understand that. Like if you worked your way through and it's the pinnacle of the singing competition, then you've won. So why would they want to do that again? And when I was fortunate enough to get to work with quartets that went on to win, I, that's when I really figured it out because the, the crown and the winning, just like any other win is of course a culmination and it's wonderful, but the journey of making four separate voices sound the same is I understand why someone would want to do that again. And you said it happens faster because everybody comes in the door, anybody that has, you know, mm -hmm. a crown. so you come and stand on that spot and you say, tell me what to do and I'll do it. Yep. Which, which is a, a, also a learned skill. As a singer, you have to detach a little bit from your own sound and what you think sounds your best and find a coach who says, that's not it. And you, you have to be able to say, okay, and so the second time around, I know, because I've seen them. They stand there, they just hit the line and say, tell me what to do. Yeah, tell me and what I'll to do. do it. <laughs> it's great. You know, one of the funny things about that is when you come back the second time, there are coaches who don't want to tell you because you've already been there. Oh. And they, that was why working with Bev Sellers was so good for us, because it didn't matter to her, because Connie and I were both in that quartet. and. Sure. It was fine with her that she didn't, didn't matter to her that it was us. So she just said, okay, come on, let's go, let's go to work and Good. all that. I love but it. I think one of the other things about that is that we, um, while we get to the line and we say, yes, do it. Um, it always reminds me of that very first coaching session when you, when you were brand new and you first got up there and you were so scared, <laughs> you're so nervous and every, everything's about you, about you, about you. They hate me. I'm going to be awful. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah. And then the eventual change into it's never you. It's always us. Yeah. It's always, what can I do to make us? That's a, such a radical change. I mean, I was teary. I cried in my first one. I, you know, I got very teary. And and it's just because I, it wasn't because anybody hurt my feelings. It was because I was trying so hard to do it. And sometimes you just don't understand right away. No, I couldn't make it to the end of any phrase because I was using my <laughs> muscles like this. I'm going to show them that I understand being a lead. That's right. I'm going to be it. I'm going to be perfect in every way. Well, right. Sure. The first time I coach, because I was a lead when I first joined, and the first time my very first coach said, okay, Renee, I want you to try this. And I thought, what? You're going to talk, what? You just, I have to sing by myself? <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> what? Whoops. Oh, Wait, maybe I'm, I'm a baritone. <laughs> terrified. Well, I didn't know that yet. I figured yeah. that out later. Yeah. You know, on, my, on my first night at chorus rehearsal, when I joined the Chula Vista Chorus, they made me a baritone because I could read music. The next week was the one when they turned me into the lead section leader. <laughs> they said, oh, you're a little loud for a baritone. <laughs> we <can't. laughs> got to put you on that melody. And you probably, well, yeah, you probably carried yeah. the lead section quite a bit. <laughs> well, I did. Somewhere out there in, in, I don't know, internet land, there's a picture of, of my very first chorus and us standing on stage. Oh. And we made... We made red sleeveless satin dresses because um, we were doing a 20s package. Oh, and, yeah. so, and so you're getting the idea. And we made cloche hats and they, and they came down right here. To, so you could only see your face. And I had big round glasses. I looked, I looked like a bug. <laughs> In red satin. <laughs> In red satin. <laughs> so this has been so, great. We got up to the, the late 80s. And so the we'll, next time we'll have to talk about what happens after that. Right. So then well, we can start with the 90s. 
yeah, and yeah, yeah, really yeah. look at some of the things because I've always um, heard reference to the holy moly phase and uh -huh. then right after that I've always talked about it as the phase where we discovered loud uh, well we did and we we really started doing some things to the voice that were not um, all that great in terms of vocal health and what I'm amazed about and so proud of our organization is we bring, we swing the, we let the pendulum swing back and we say wait 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 a minute mm -hmm. we have to actually study the structure of of uh, the vocal cords and the voice and how we're producing sound and well, I think, yeah and we also and then you know after that you'll help us go through that but we'll walk through how we discovered how to create sound without it being fueled by volume so and the influence of arrangers. Yes. There's a lot of influence by arrangers in the next, in the years after that. The arrangers started to go, oh, well, we could do, and then we could do, and then what if we, yeah. and all of a sudden we have everything open to us. All right. So we will check back in for another yes. chat, and we'll start with the 90s. Okay. Thank you so much for starting this lesson with all of us. We really appreciate it, and we will uh, see you soon for our next installment. Yes, ma'am. I'll be here. Okay. Take care. Bye. Stay safe. You too.